Learning target A is just using trigonometry to find the measures of sides of triangles. This is what you guys have been do you did in geometry, right? You used angle measures and given sides to find other sides. You used sides to find angle measures, right? And we're not going to do all that stuff later this week. But today we're just doing trigonometry to find sides of triangles. Okay? So, in the first example, I'm going to do the first one and you're going to do the other two. So state which trigonometric function you would use to solve each problem. So in A, it says if angle S is 42 degrees and side ST is 8, then find RS. So if I have this angle, X would be the adjacent side and 8 would be the hypotenuse. So which, which trig function would I use? Cosine, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, you wouldn't probably use, but if you can use cosine, that means you could also use secant. Right? You could technically use the reciprocal. But you wouldn't. That's fine. So go ahead and do the next two real fast. So for the second one, which trig function would you use? Tangent or technically you could use cotangent. And then for C, what would you use? Fine. And again, technically you could use cosecant. Okay. Questions about those? All right. Now, I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. Your calculators have to be in degree mode. So far, we haven't, it shouldn't have mattered. Because so far we haven't used the sine, cosine, and tangent buttons on your calculator. So it doesn't matter. But starting today, we're going to be using the sine, cosine, and tangent buttons on your calculator. So if you use sine, cosine, and tangent, and your calculator's not in degree mode, then you're going to get the wrong answer. Okay? So just make sure you're in degree mode. All right. So these we're actually going to figure out. I'm going to do the first two, and then we'll go from there. If side B is 13 units, and angle A is 76 degrees, then find side A. So for 76, I've got the opposite side of the adjacent side. So we have opposite and adjacent. We're going to use tangent, right? So I'm going to set this up as tangent of 76 degrees equals the opposite side over the adjacent side. I put tangent of 76 degrees over 1, then I know that it's just two ratios that I can cross multiply. So if I cross multiply, I get the tangent of 76 degrees times 13. Now, in your calculator, I know you guys can type things in on your own, and I get that, but be careful. If you type in the tangent of 76 degrees, before you are multiplying by 13, you need to close the parentheses. I know you guys know that, but it still doesn't help you guys to not make that mistake on quizzes. All right? So make sure you close the parentheses, or better yet, just to enter, and then multiply by 13 so you don't have to worry about it. Okay? But make sure you get the tangent of 76 by itself times 13. Okay? So we get 52.14. It's just around to the nearest tenth, so 52.1 units. Questions about that one? Okay. And making sure you use parentheses. Super important. All right. Um, on the second one, if angle B is 26 degrees and side B is 18 units, find side C, which is the hypotenuse. So I've got the opposite side and the hypotenuse. That means I'm using sine. This time, though, it's not as easy as multiplying by 18. Right? If you cross multiply technically, you get a sine of 26 degrees times C equals 18. So if I'm going to solve for C, I need to divide by sine of 26 degrees. 
So make sure you're, if you're not going to show your work, that you're thinking through what you need to accomplish before you just start typing stuff into the calculator. So 18 divided by sine of 26 degrees, 41.06 or 41.1 units. Questions on that? Okay. Now, uh, I'm not going to do the next one because the next one will just be the same thing we've been doing, right? You can set up the ratio and cross multiply. Um, on the next one, you notice that it has degrees and minutes. And the next example we're going to do also has degrees and minutes. You can just type that into your calculator. So no matter if it's sine, cosine, or tangent, you can type in cosine of, and you can type it in with your degrees and minutes symbols from the angle menu, and it works just fine. So you don't have to convert it first or anything like that. You can just type it in. And so we'll do that on the next problem, okay? But I'm pretty sure you guys don't need me to do a third one of this. Any questions? Okay. And the last one. It says each base angle of an isosceles triangle measures 55 degrees in 30 minutes. Each of the congruent sides is 10 centimeters long. So I drew an isosceles triangle. Each of the sides is 10 centimeters. And then each of the congruent base angles are 55 degrees in 30 minutes. <laughs> It says find the altitude of the triangle. Well, the altitude is a line from the vertex to a side that's perpendicular. So I drew that in already as well. Since it's perpendicular, I know this is a 90 degree angle. So I know it's the right triangle, so I can use trigonometry. So this is the altitude. You can call that x. So let's say we just use this half of the triangle. Right, so now I have a right triangle. So if I'm going to find the altitude, which trig function would I use? Using that base angle. Sine. So sine of 55 degrees in 30 minutes equals x over 10. So I'm going to multiply by 10. So again, you can just type this into your calculator. Just go to that angle menu. And make sure you type in, well, that's too many fives. Make sure you type in the correct symbols. And so then times 10, that's 8.24. That's in centimeters. Question, yes? So you, you, can convert it first. you could convert it first, or you could just type it in. Either or. If you convert it first, you just type it in and then hit more buttons. If you're going to type it in, you may as well just type it in with under sign. All right, questions about the first part, A. All right, on B, what is the length of the base? Well, the base is this whole bottom of this isosceles triangle. I can find half of it. By looking at this right triangle. So this time I have the looking for the adjacent side and have the hypotenuse. So I use cosine equals x over 10. So I'm just going to go back up and grab this. I'll just type it in again and change this to cosine and then multiply by 10. So I get 5.66, but that's only half of the base of the triangle. So I need to multiply by 2 to get the full base. And you get 11.3. Questions about that? It's the length of the base. You have the whole, the whole thing. Because we had half of it. So we got to multiply two. And then part C says find the area of the triangle. So how do you find the area of a triangle? Half times base times height. Well, we found the base just now in part B. 
and we found the height in the first part. So we're going to multiply all that together. And we get 46.6 centimeters squared. Any questions on finding sides of triangles using trigonometry?